the people making decisions are definitely not interested in long-term economic stability. Consequences related to everything from nutrition to infections. Cancer disease can be cured by one small piece of plant that can be lost tomorrow. Disease emergence, uh, I think a lot of us now believe, is quite connected to the integrity of force. People that are bearing the brunt of the disease burden are the people, the impoverished people, people that have minimal resources. The people making the decisions are really focused on their personal gain and also what's going to be profitable in the short term. If we're waiting for an apocalypse to happen of that nature, where we're going to blow up in an instant, well, I mean, it's also possible. But I think we're actually slowly killing ourselves right now, already. It's more than time that we as human beings uh, start to change this way to use the nature. We are not the owners of the nature, we are part of that. Deforestation's on the rise. Um, we used to say that we would lose a, uh, a football field worth of forest globally every three seconds, and right now, every two seconds, we lose a, um, a football field of, of forest. So deforestation is chopping down trees, and it doesn't particularly matter whether that's in the tropics or, you know, in New England or in Canada or wherever. Um, and, you know, deforestation happens at different scales. I mean, there's large-scale deforestation, huge swaths of forest being chopped down in various parts of the world. There's small-scale stuff, you know, in neighborhoods and, and whatever, and they have they all actually matter to health. Deforestation is not just in the Amazon. It's a global problem, certainly, and it occurs anywhere from the tundra um, and the northern latitudes all the way down to the southernmost latitudes. So it, it affects us all. I'm in the middle of the Amazon. I You're live in, the in Manaus City. Manaus City is a, a 2.5 million uh, peso city. On the, her on, on the middle of the Amazon. In the Amazon, generally we have different kinds of deforestation, but they generally start with uh, a process of degradation of the forest. The vast majority of the timber extracted in the Amazon is illegal. We use a mix of satellite monitoring, flyovers, and a plane. And then we also send people into the field um, where I've been myself, where you meet the people who are impacted, indigenous peoples, who are the best guardians of the forest and how, um, you know, policies by this current government are encouraging invasions into their territory. So we worked in collaboration with indigenous peoples into the field, in the field. And you also speak with uh, uh, workers who've been exploited because it's really the Wild West in these rural areas. And so there's still a high incidence of labor akin to slavery. Um, so you see a, a human impact that's really heartbreaking and how the um, industrialization and converting this, you know, this, this pristine critical ecosystem into um, industrial scale agriculture and how that's impacting um, the locals there, it's, it's pretty heartbreaking. Local scale, we know that in, in, even in Detroit, there are huge disparities in, in urban tree cover, right? So there's some parts of Detroit that have lots of trees and there's some parts that have none. And that's a big deal from a health standpoint because those trees, one, buffer air pollution. So they can absorb the air pollution that we know makes people sick. Uh, they can cool down cities and cities are warmer than their surrounding areas because they've been paved over. And that's a big deal because climate change is making heat waves much more dangerous humans, we alter our habitats as we move into the, our habitats, as we create cities, as we create um, suburban, you know, neighborhoods, uh, villages. Uh, we also alter the flow of water, the hydrology of places. Um, we alter the climate, don't we? And as such, um, we are creating essentially 
innumerable changes in our environment, and some of them actually cause some diseases to vanish. You know, it's not all increases. Some do vanish. Um, and on the other hand, we are also allowing for species that are very well adapted to, to change, um, like rats, for example. You know, we're creating a lot of habitat that they're able to move into. So by doing that, we are favoring both insect species as well as uh, mammalian and vertebrate species that are very good at adapting to new circumstances. And those species, as it so, so turns out, oftentimes invest more in breeding a lot, creating a lot of offspring, as opposed to maybe investing a lot in their immune system. Um, and so now, you know, this is... Um, not well-proven ground, it's a theory, but one could say that these species that are so well adapted to, um, to the generalists, to moving into these new kinds of habitats um, and do not invest much in their immune system, then may be more permissive to carrying viruses and other pathogens. So zoonotic diseases are diseases that um, are often maintained in non-human animal populations. And there's what we call spillover events, events in which uh, pathogens move from those animals to into humans. And sometimes humans can't transmit those pathogens, so they, they can get sick because they were in, uh, Lyme disease is a good example of that, where they're in contact with ticks in, in, in different uh, regions, forested regions, and um, they get sick, they can't transmit the disease. Other pathogens that you might get from uh, livestock, for instance, um, salmonella or E. coli, you get sick by eating contaminated food. You can actually transmit, often transmit those diseases to other humans, and there's that person-to-person -person piece also. Um, and, then a K, and, and then the other category of zoonotic transmission would be things that uh, like COVID. We think that COVID emergence happened in a similar way that SARS emergence happened in, and, and some often avian flu occurs this way and that's um, in the wet markets in um, Asia and China largely where um, uh, people are selling um, wild animal for um, food and and so there's this density of animals density and these markets are highly very dense and that's where often spillover occurs connecting dots right now could be easier with coronavirus and wildfires and hurricanes you know it's in it's in our faces nature is really trying to tell us something <laughs> and and i think i think that's the part that we need to work on it is really making sure that we acknowledge and understand how our health is not really about you know the foods we eat and the medicines we may take and the things that people probably hear about going to a doctor it's really fundamentally about the state of the natural world and the climate um, and without those things it really doesn't matter like a lot of these other things are sort of icing i mean they're important don't get me wrong <laughs> but they're not gonna save us from pandemics and climate change and these other things that are just overwhelming potentially if we don't address them.